So before we start breaking things, we need to learn how to run and make some stuff first. Um, and what we're going to be using is something called the terminal, which is a command line interface which we're going to use not only to run our glitch codec, but also to compile our source code. Um, and the terminal is a way of interfacing with a computer that doesn't pretend to be uh, some kind of real life object like a folder or a trash can because uh, we don't need it to pretend to be those things. So um, what we're gonna we're gonna use it first to run a video through our glitch codec, which despite the name isn't actually going to glitch anything just yet. Um, it's it's just going to compress it because we actually haven't hacked uh, anything yet, um, and I'll explain that in a bit. Um, but first, let's just run something through it. So go ahead and open up a terminal and type in glitch codec, one word. Um, this lets the computer know that we want to uh, use our glitch codec. Then put a space and type in dash i, which stands for input, and then another space, and the name of the video you want to input. So in the glitch home folder, I have some sample videos there that you can use, or you can uh, drag and drop a video from a USB stick onto that folder, um, whatever you want. So I'm going to run a video called nick.mp4. And this is case sensitive, so it's important that we type it in exactly like the file is named. And then lastly, we're going to put one more space and type in the name that we want our new, newly compressed video uh, to be. So I'm going to type in compressednick.mov. That could, that could be any name, so long as you keep that .mov afterwards. And then go ahead and click Enter, and it's going to start compressing our video. So for various reasons, um, like streaming video on the web, DVD encoding, uh, television broadcasting, etc., uh, videos, videos need to be compressed. And what that means is that they need to look and play as best as possible while becoming as small a file as possible in order to most efficiently achieve all these reasons. Um, so codecs are a series of compression algorithms used to achieve uh, this compromise between a file's size and quality based on assumptions made about what we won't notice or don't need to see or hear in a given media file. So there exist various different kinds of uh, codecs and algorithms that do this and they all do, do it in different ways. Some sort of uh, do it on a frame by frame method, others sort of use motion vectors, um, sort of looking at the difference between between frames over the course of, of a particular time. And we don't really need to get into the details of how this works, but it's important that we understand that they all work differently. And so all these all these videos are made differently, and this means that they can break differently. Um, and that's what we're about, uh, breaking them. Okay, start hacking some stuff. Go up to the menu where it says places and select the home folder to open up our glitch home folder. Then open up the FFmpeg folder and then within that the libav codec folder. Now you're going to want to scroll down till you find a file called h263data.h and open that up. Um, this is where we're going to start hacking, but first remember it's important to always make a backup of any file that you're going to be tinkering with, um, like we said before. Um, so I've already made a backup of this particular file, and you can find that in the uh, glitch home folder. But in the future, as you start to mess with some of these other files, remember that it's always important to make a backup. Um, so what we're looking at here is uh, part of the source code to the H.263 codec, and like we said before, source code is human readable. Um, which is why you can make some sense of, of this. Um, so uh, scroll down a bit to uh, a comment that I've made there. And um, what we're going to do is start messing with those pink numbers. Um, so go ahead and change some numbers. I'm going to change some arbitrarily um, and then save it. Um, now we're going to open up a new terminal and type in CD, which stands for Change Directory. Uh, space ffmpeg and hit enter and once we're in there we're going to type in make space install and hit enter and now what we're doing is that we're taking our newly modified source code and we're compiling it and turning it into new object code to make our new glitch codec 
Now, um, the reason we've been in the in the FFmpeg folder um, is because the glitch codec is just a copy of FFmpeg. And what FFmpeg is is a, a free and open source tool um, which uses a library of codecs to compress video, to turn one video format into another video format, um, which is what we're going to do. But we want to hack some of those codecs in that library so that when we compress videos, uh, we also glitch them. Um, so once that's done compiling, uh, you'll notice your terminal stops uh, doing a bunch of other stuff. Um, we want to go ahead and, and go back to our original terminal where we had uh, compressed a video, and we're going to more or less do the same thing. First type in glitch codec to run our glitch codec. Type in a space dash i, another space, and then the name of the video you want to import. This time I'm going to import nick2.mp4. Then type in another space, and now the name of our new what we want our new video to be. I'm gonna I'm gonna call mine Nick to glitch dot mov. Uh, again, make sure it's dot mov, and then hit enter to compress it. So these codecs, these compression algorithms, these assumptions, um, they deeply affect the life of images and media today. That's a quote from a professor at Lancaster University named Adrian McKenzie, who's done a great deal of uh, research and writing on the subject of codecs, and he says that at a phenomenological level, codecs deeply influence the very texture, flow, and materiality of sounds and images. Codecs catalyze new relations between people, things, spaces, and times in events and forms. And so uh, the role codecs play in our ways of seeing the world is way more pervasive than, than we might imagine. Um, nearly every bit of media uh, content that we encounter on, on television, on DVDs, on CDs we buy at stores, on MP3s we download to our iPods, on videos we watch online, they've all been compressed with codecs. Um, and so the, the importance definitely becomes clear from an economic standpoint. McKinsey explains that, that, that codecs are a mosaic of intellectual property claims, often 700 held by entertainment, telecommunications, government, academic, and military owners. Um, and the large patent pool uh, attests to the significance of some of these codecs. So they play an important role in our sort of digital media landscape. So once your video is finished compressing, go ahead into your glitch home folder and open it up. So the glitch we're looking at right now is specific to the codec that we hacked, H263, and even more specific to the, to the piece of the file that we hacked. So if we went back to that H263 data file and messed with another part of it, we'd get a different kind of glitch. If we went and chose a different file altogether, then we could get another kind of glitch. So there's a lot of possibilities here, a lot of room for experimentation. Um, another thing to, to make note of is that what we're calling a glitch is actually the combination of a couple factors. First, the misencoded or corrupted file, in my case, the nick2glitch.mov file. And second, the media player that's interpreting that file. So if I were to take this video, save it on a USB stick, open it up on another computer uh, with another media player or in another program, I could get an entirely different glitch. Or it might not open the file at all, and my glitch will get replaced with an error message. And so this is important because it um, helps to realize that the glitch actually happens in between spaces, in between the misencoded or corrupted file and the container or frame, the program that opens up and interprets that file.